Hello. Myself is Bangare from SND College of Engineering and Research Center, Evla. So we are discussing about the course of first year engineering, basic electrical engineering. In that we are discussing unit one in that we have already covered certain topics on magnetic circuits. So now let us further discuss about the next topics in the magnetic circuit. And that is about the Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction, then leakage flux and fringing. So one by one, let us discuss with that. So electromagnetic induction. So electromagnetic induction means electricity induced by the magnetic field. The phenomenon by which EMF is obtained from flux is called electromagnetic induction. So by the means of the electromagnetic induction, so the EMF is obtained. And EMF can be induced in a coil by moving coil in the fixed magnetic field or keeping the coil fixed in a moving magnetic field by creating relative motion between flux and coil. If there is a change of flux lines with respect to the conductor, that is, there is cutting of the flux lines by the conductor, then EMF get induced in that conductor. So this phenomenon of cutting of flux lines by the conductor to get the induced EMF in the conductor or coil is called electromagnetic induction. So Faraday has stated the two basic laws of electromagnetic induction is Faraday's first law of electromagnetic induction and Faraday's second law of electromagnetic induction. So what is the first law of electromagnetic induction? According to Faraday's first law, when you are the number of magnetic lines of force, that is flux, linking with a coil or a circuit changes and EMF gets induced in that coil or circuit. So when you are a conductor cuts the magnetic flux lines, and EMF is induced in the conductor. So this is the first law. And in second law, the magnetic, the magnitude of the induced EMF is directly proportional. Magnitude of the induced EMF is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux linkages. To the rate of change of flux linkages. That is flux into turns of the coil, number of turns the coil this flux linkage is always equal to flux into number of turns of coil. So if there are number of turns of coil are n, the initial flux linkage with the coil is phi 1, therefore the initial flux linkage is equal to n phi 1. And the magnitude can be given as magnitude of the induced voltage is given as V is equal to minus n d phi by dt. Now let us highlight on the magnetic materials. Certain types of magnetic materials are there, ferromagnetic materials. These materials are strongly attracted by a magnet. Example, iron, steel, nickel, cobalt, some metallic alloys. The relative permeability of these materials is very high. Means the ferromagnetic materials are those materials which are gate attracted towards the magnet. So all ferromagnetic materials are attracted towards the magnet. Next type of magnetic material is a paramagnetic material. So in this, these materials are attracted by a magnet, but not very strongly. These are also attracted, but the force of attraction is not strong as compared to that of ferromagnetic materials. So the example, aluminum, tin, platinum, magnesium, manganese, etc. The relative permeability of these materials is slightly more than one. The next type of material is diamagnetic materials. So these materials are not at all attracted by any magnet. There will be no effect if that diamagnetic materials comes in contact with the magnet then there will be no effect on that material. I mean, there will be no attractive force in between them. 
the relative permeability of these materials is less than one. Example, zinc, mercury, lead, sulfur, copper, silver, etc. Then let us discuss with the magnetic circuit. We already covered this topic, magnetic circuit. The magnetic circuit is nothing but the complete closed path followed by any group of magnetic lines of flux. This is a simple magnetic circuit shown. N number of turns of the coils are wound on that magnetic, in that magnetic circuit. Here the equivalent circuit, electrical circuit. And let us see the analogy between electric circuit and magnetic circuit. In electric circuit, EMF is there, while the analogous quantity in magnetic circuit is MMF, its unit is ampere turns. Here in electric circuit, current is there, it is measured in amperes, while in magnetic circuit, the analogous quantity is flux and it is measured in Weber. In electric circuit, it is resistance, we will measure it in Ohm. Magnetic circuit, it's a reluctance and is measured in ampere per Weber. Then in electric circuit, current density is there, ampere per meter square. While in magnetic circuit, the analogous quantity is flux density, is measured in Tesla or Weber per meter square. Then here, electric circuit conductivity is there and here permeability is there. And the difference, these are the analogous quantity, it is similarities. While differences are also there, the difference is current actually flows in the electric circuit and flux is created but does not flow. It induces. Circuit may be open or closed. In electric circuit, circuit may be open or closed. And circuit is always closed in magnetic circuit. So these are the similarities and the differences or the analogies point of view between electric and magnetic circuit. This is the electric circuit and it is the equivalent magnetic circuit. So here the source of EMF is there, voltage source, current is flowing and the resistance of the circuit is R. So according to Ohm's law, the I is equal to V upon R and the equivalent magnetic circuit is here is the MMF source, N number of coils are there. So this force F is equal to NI, flux phi is produced there, created there and the reluctance S is there and phi is generated, that phi is equal to F upon R is the reluctance. The equivalent reluctance of a number of reluctances in series is the, just the sum of the individual reluctances. That is whenever the reluctances are in series, the equivalent reluctance can be found out by simply adding in last lecture, we have seen that that is S equivalent is equal to S1 plus H2 plus H3. Similarly, reluctances in parallel, they can be combined according to the law of parallel, this just like in electric circuit, 1 upon R equivalent is equal to 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 plus 1 upon R3. Now, the topic to be discussed here is about the leakage flux and fringing. Now, what is the leakage flux? Whenever we speak about the electric circuit, that time we always speak that the leakage current is there. So what exactly this leakage current? In the same manner, the leakage flux is there. Leakage flux is there. So the most of the applications which are using magnetic effects of an electric current are using flux in the air gap for their operation. So such devices are generators, motors, measuring instruments like ammeters, voltmeters. Now such devices consist of magnetic circuits. Such devices consist of certain magnetic circuits with an air gap. And flux in air gap is used to produce the required effect. So whatever see, this is the magnetic circuit. And in between that magnetic circuit, there is the air gap. And in this air gap, this is the area of the operations. This is the area of the operations. Now in this air gap, that flux is also links and it flows. This flux is links here also. Now such a flux, which is available in the air gap, 
and is utilized to produce the desired effect is called useful flux now whatever the flux inside this air gap this flux is used to operate certain thing to operate certain thing means this is the utilized this flux will get utilized for certain operation and whatever the flux present in this air gap is called as the useful flux that is phi o now it is expected that whatever is the flux produced by the magnetizing coil whatever the flux produced by this magnetizing coil it should complete its path to the ion to this ion core and this air gap so all the flux will be available in the air gap but in actual practice it is not happen the entire flux available in the air gap this is not completely utilized and this is because we have already seen that there is no perfect insulator for the flux there is not any insulator for the flux so what happened so the part of the flux completes its path through the air or medium in which coil and magnetic circuit is placed so such a flux which leaks and completes its path and completes its path ye jo hai dikhaya hai dotted lines with arrows this is the leakage flux ye kya hai this is the leakage flux so such flux which leaks and completes its path through surrounding air or medium ab yahan pe surrounding medium kya hai it is air yadi koi dusra matter rehta tha uske through ye flux jata tha yadi air hai to air ke through ye flux ja raha hai but it it loses its path ye path se bahar aa gaya hai इसका एक्सपेक्टेड पार्ट कौन सा है दिस आयन कोर ये आयन कोर से ये मैग्नेटिक कोर से ये फ्लक्स को जाना था लेकिन व्हाट हैपन ये आयन कोर के मैग्नेटिक कोर के बाहर ये फ्लक्स निकल गया है और ये बाहर जो फ्लक्स निकला है इट इज कॉल्ड एज द लीकेज फ्लक्स राइट सो दिस लीकेज इज नॉट डिजायर लीकेज इज नॉट डिजायर बट इट अनएक्सपेक्टेड थिंग एंड दैट अनएक्सपेक्टेड फ्लक्स surrounding the air or the medium is known as the leakage flux the figure mein aapko ye leakage flux dikh raha hai now here ye jo total flux jo hai whatever the flux generated due to the magnifying coil ye flux do quantities mein bhi divide ho gaya hai ek to jo utilize ho raha hai wo utilized flux aur jo dusra ki jo leakage ho raha hai right so we can say that The leakage flux is always equal to sum of sorry the total flux is always equal to sum of the useful flux plus the leakage flux useful flux plus leakage flux see the phi generated flux total generated flux is always equal to phi u plus phi l phi u is your leakage your useful flux phi l is your leakage flux now let us see what is the leakage coefficient this leakage coefficient is also known as hopkinson's coefficient it is also known as hopkinson's coefficient now the ratio of the total flux produced ratio of total flux produced to the useful flux set up in the air gap of the magnetic circuit is called the leakage coefficient or leakage factor and it is denoted by the greek letter lambda So lambda is always equal to total flux upon useful flux that is phi t upon phi u, phi t upon phi u. Okay, here total flux is phi. It is phi upon phi u useful flux. So next is the magnetic fringing. Oh, what is magnetic fringing? When the flux enters into the air gap, this concept is related to air gap flux. When the flux, useful flux जो रहता है कि जो एयर गैप में सेटअप होता है वो एयर गैप में जो सेटअप फ्लक्स हुआ है तो दैट फ्लक्स एंटर्स इन टू द एयर गैप इट पास टू द एयर गैप एंड इन टर्म्स ऑफ द पैरल फ्लक्स लाइन सो देयर एग्जिस्ट फोर्स ऑफ रिपल्शन बिटवीन द मैग्नेटिक लाइन ऑफ फोर्स हुई चार पैरल एंड हैविंग सेम डिरेक्शन एंड दीज फ्लक्स Will get indulged. This flux will get 
इंडल्ज और बल्ज आउटवर्ड फिगर में जैसा शो किया है डी एंड डी डैश ये देखो ये जो फ्लक्स है इसको कहां से जाना था ये बाउंड्री है उसकी बाउंड्री के अंदर से जाना था लेकिन ये बाउंड्री के बाहर आ गया है ये गेट बल्ज आउट बी डैश एंड डी ऐसा ही बाहर आ गया है बिकॉज इज दोर्स ऑफ रिपल्शन बिटवीन द मैग्नेटिक लाइन ऑफ फोर्सेस उसकी वजह से ये फ्लक्स मैग्नेटिक कोवर के बाहर आ गया है राइट right? अरे बाहर आया हुआ जो फ्लक्स है इट इज नथिंग बट दिस फिनोमिनॉन इज कॉल्ड एज द मैग्नेटिक फ्रिंजिंग इट इज कॉल्ड एज द मैग्नेटिक फ्रिंजिंग सो दिस इफेक्ट इज नोन एज फ्रिंजिंग एंड लॉन्गर द एयर गैप द ग्रेटर इज द फ्रिंजिंग जितना एयर गैप बड़ा लंबा होगा उतना ही स्प्रेडिंग ऑफ द फ्लक्स ज्यादा होगा स्प्रेडिंग ऑफ द फ्लक्स एट द एजेस ऑफ द एयर गैप इज कॉल्ड द फ्रिंजिंग दैट इज spreading that flux gets spread out and as the air gap is more more and more spreading is there and as more and more spreading is there more and more fringing is there so this fringing is directly proportional to the length of the air gap so this tendency of flux to bulge out at the edges of the air gap is called magnetic fringing now this magnetic fringing has two effects it increases the effective cross sectional area of the air gap fringing ki wajah se kya ho raha hai ki effective cross sectional area hai magnetic core ka to badh jata hai it reduces the flux density in the air gap uski wajah se kya hota hai wo bulge out hota hai spread hota hai is iski wajah se spreading ki wajah se the flux density get reduced in the air gap so the leakage fringing and reluctance in practice should be as small as possible so it should be very very small or it should be minimize minimum so this is possible by choosing the good magnetic material and making the air gap as narrow as possible so to avoid fringing the air gap should be avoided air gap should be avoided or it should be often narrow it should be very very narrow so this is all about the magnetic flux link leakage flux and magnetic fringing so this is enough for today thank you